Hi, in this C-sharp tutorial, we're going to create an application that shows the for loop. So this is the application in front of us here. It's a square calculator. We're going to count from three to 12 and calculate the squares of each number. So a great way to show what a for loop can do. Okay, so here is the application that we're going to make in action. So you can put a number in here such as uh, six and another number such as 15 and click the calculate button and it will count from six up to 14 and calculate the square for each of those numbers. So inside of this program, we're going to demonstrate what a for loop does and how it can be used in a situation like this. So here's a quick preview of the key idea that we're going to learn in this application. So you can see that in the center of this program, we have a for loop going on. So we are counting from a lower limit to an upper limit, and then we are simply doing a math formula in between. So I'll explain this in just a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is a layout. So you can see that I have a form, I have a button, I have a couple of text edits, and then a list box, two labels. Now, if you want to build this on your own, go ahead and set the layout. Otherwise, in the next two minutes, I'm going to show you how to do this. Then we'll get into programming. So I'm gonna start a brand new project here, and then we're going to build the layout. Let's choose a Windows Forms app with .NET as the framework, and now let's give it a title. So I'm gonna call mine Squares Calc, and then wait for it to get started. All right, so it looks like the app is up and running. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the text on the form so that it has a good title. Next, let's uh, make the form tall and narrow, and let's put in some controls. Okay, so the first controls I'm going to put at the top of the screen here. Let's put in a button. And for this button, let's give it a label of uh, calculate. So that'll be its text. For its button name, let's call it btn underscore calculate as well. Then let's put in two labels here. And so for these two labels, we'll have label one and two. We'll give the text of the first one is lower limit and the text value for the second one to be upper limit. Then following that, let's put in the, th uh, the two uh, text boxes. So a text box allows you to enter numbers. So the first text box will be the lower limit. So we'll give that uh, the name of txt underscore lower limit. And then for the second text box, we'll call him the upper limit. And then we've got ourselves uh, the main controls of the game. So now the last control is the list box. So we'll make him tall and fairly narrow and we'll just leave it as list box one. Now the programming is going to happen inside of the button here, calculate. So let's go open that. So I'll double click on it. So in the button program or in the method here, we're going to define two variables. I'm going to call the first one lower limit and let's set its value to zero. The second one will be upper limit and we'll pick something such as 10. So you can pick any numbers you want for their initial values. They're going to be changed. Then we're going to reassign those values here in the next two lines. So the lower limit is going to be equal to the text value of the text field called text lower limit. Now, as you can see, it will not automatically convert from a string to an integer. So we are going to use the parse command. So to parse an integer, we need to use int.parse and put in parentheses the thing that we want to parse. So that'll translate from a string into an integer if the user types in a real number. If they don't type in a number, it'll crash. Then the second one is also an upper limit value and it is a parse as well. And so we'll parse both the lower and the upper and put them into their appropriate values. Now to make sure that this application doesn't crash, I'm going to use a try and a catch block. So remember the try block will let you attempt to do something and the catch block will execute if there is an error. So we will try to parse these two numbers. And if something goes wrong, we will push, push a message, message out that says, uh, please, uh, only numbers. Okay, now for the new stuff that we're going to learn in this tutorial. So I told you that this was about an example using a for loop. So here's what a for loop looks like. We're going to have the word for, and then in parentheses, we're going to put three statements and then some curly brackets after that. So the three statements are, first of all, the initial value of a var variable. So I'm going to pick a variable called x and we'll set him to zero. Then we're going to let this thing run 10 times. So I'm going to say as long as x is less than 10, continue. 
And then lastly, the third statement in a for loop is the, in, uh, the interval or the uh, increment. And so x plus plus means count by one. So one greater than the one before. Now you could put other, thing, other things than just a plus plus, but that's usually what people use in for loops. Now, so this will go from zero all the way up to nine. Now in the example that we're creating here, I don't want to hard code from zero to nine. So I'm going to change the zero to the variable called lower limit. So that's where it'll start. And then the upper limit is the other number that the user provides. And so it could go up to whatever number they put. Now this is a really simple program. All we're doing is doing a square of each number in the counter. So I'll put in this phrase that says uh, x equals, and then we'll put in the actual value x. Then we'll say squared equals, and then we'll put in x times x. So that should tell us uh, what the square is. So let's see if this works, let's run it. Okay, I got the app running. Notice I have the default values of 3 and 12. Let's go ahead and calculate. And sure enough, it says x equals 3, squared equals 9, and it counts all the way up to 11. And 11 squared is 121. Now you might ask, I, I asked the upper limit to be 12. How come it stopped at 11? Well, that's because of this less than sign here. So as long as x is less than 12, this loop will continue. And as soon as it hits 12, then it stops. So if you want this to go up to 12, then we need to add one character. So if we want to add one character here, I can say less than or equal to. That's what this symbol means. And let's try it again. Okay, this time when I run it from 3 to 12, it should run all the way to 12. So 12 squared is 144. Now back into the code for this button, I'm going to clear the list box every time we try to do a new formula. So that way it'll start over. Let's try it again and see if we can do two different calculations. Okay, so I've got it running again. So let's put in something different this time. Let's put in a nine to 12 and calculate. You can see it starts at nine and then it counts up to 12. Let's go up higher. Let's go up to 20, for example. We'll calculate again and there it is. Now there's no reason why you can't put in a negative number. So let's put in negative nine. And you can see that the squares work just as well, even though they're negative numbers. So we can go really large. Let's go to 90. And we can see now that there are over 100 rows in my list box. Now I'm going to add another control, and I'm going to call it count by. So we'll put a label in here, and the label will be count by. And then the text box that goes alongside him will also have a name of txt count by. Now what are we going to use count by for? Well, count by is the loop counter. So let's go back into calculate and add a new item to the list. All right, so we're going to give an initial value to this integer called count by. We'll take that integer and we will assign it a value from the text box called count by. And now the change here in the count by will be in this line here at the third part of the for loop. So now instead of saying x plus plus, I'm going to say x equals x plus count by. So now it should be able to count by other things just besides one. Let's go ahead and add a uh, default value here. And so for the count by, I'm going to put in the word uh, three, how about number three, and let's run it. Okay, so I've got three to 12. Let's make that three to 120, and we're going to count by threes and calculate. So you can see that our counter now is starting at 3. It jumps to 6, 9, 12, 5, uh, 15, 18. So it's counting by threes all the way through. And uh, you can see that if I change this to uh, 6, for example, or let's try, and, let's try 7. How about something a little bit bigger and calculate? And now we go 3, 7, 17, 24. So it depends on the uh, three variables here of how your for loop behaves. So go ahead and experiment with several of these. Let's try something curious. Let's try a lower value of 30. And we're trying to count backwards. So I'm going to put a negative 3 in as a count by. And hopefully it will go backwards. So let's run it. And uh, it does not seem to work. I'm not getting any values here. So how could I do it if I wanted to start at a lower level, which was actually a higher number? I'd have to put some more logic into my code. OK, so now I'm going to do some calculations here. If the user types in the things incorrectly, if the lower limit is larger than the upper limit, then what I'm going to do? Well, you could, you could tell the user that there was a problem. Or in my case, I'm going to just swap the two numbers. 
So to swap two numbers, it's like uh, trying to swap two cups of coffee. You have to have a third cup where you can pour your one coffee into and then swap the coffee and then original goes back into the first cup. So it creates three different variables to swap two of them. So that's what it does. Well, I'm going to call the first one temp and then uh, swap the other two. Okay, so now in the case, if I put in 30 to 12 and choose calculate, now it restarts as 12 to 30. So it's smart enough to know that if the first one is bigger than the second one, we'll trade places. So there's a lot of logic that you can play with with for loops, and I've just given you a start. So use this as an example to build on, and you can experiment with not just uh, uh, addition, but you could do multiplication or exponents. You, you don't have to just keep adding things. And uh, the sky is the limit because you've got the entire programming language at your disposal. So this is a great start for you if you're just learning how to, use, how to use for loops. So a for loop is used for counting. In the previous tutorial, I showed you while loops. So it depends on your circumstances. You might choose a while. Sometimes you use a for loop. And uh, there's also a for each loop that you could look up. But those are the general loops that you would use in most programming situations. So thanks for watching. Let's go on to the next tutorial in learning more about C Sharp.